and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him. And on finding him, they said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. We continue reading through uh, the letter to the Hebrews. We have the first mention of the high priest, the fact that Christ is our eternal high priest. And there will be much more reflections on this through the rest of the book of Hebrews. But I thought we would talk a little bit today about who the high priest was and who the high priest signified in the ancient temple liturgy. Who was the high priest? In order to understand who the high priest was, again, we have to understand uh, what the temple represented. So yesterday I talked about how the temple was like a microcosm of the whole universe. So the ancient Jews saw the temple was a microcosm of the universe, and the whole universe was like a macro temple. And so in the temple, there was all sorts of cosmic imagery, like we talked about the panorama of the heavens on the veil of the Holy of Holies. Uh, the other thing that the temple represented is the temple represented a sort of new Garden of Eden. So in the beginning of time, in the book of Genesis, and for many modern readers, uh, we don't see all these different details in the book of Genesis. But in the book of Genesis, it is very clear that when God created the heavens and the earth and then created the garden, the garden was supposed to be like a sanctuary. And the whole world was supposed to be offered to God, and Adam himself was supposed to be the high priest of this creation. For example, the, the two jobs that Adam was given in the garden, he was told to guard and keep the garden. Uh, those Hebrew words that are used there in the book of Genesis were the same words that were used when God uh, had Solomon build the temple, and he assigned the priests to guard and keep the temple. The same Hebrew words. In the Garden of Eden, the gate to enter into the garden was in the east of the garden. So likewise in the temple, the gate to enter the temple was in the east. The gate of the Garden of Eden, after Adam and Eve had been dispelled, the gate was guarded by two cherubim. In the temple in Jerusalem, on top of the Ark of the Covenant, there were two cherubim. Right? There's all these similarities between the Garden of Eden and the temple. When the Jews built the temple in Jerusalem, they saw it as a new Garden of Eden. So because of that, they didn't just have cosmic imagery in the temple, they also had imagery from a garden in the temple. And the high priest matched up with this significance. What the high priest wore, it all had significance. For example, it's very similar to what I'm wearing today. The high priest would wear a white uh, alb like this, a white seamless garment. And that represented the fact that symbolically, the Jews used to speak of Adam and Eve, and they said that when they sinned, they lost the garments of glory. Certain graces that they were endowed with in the beginning, they lost. And they were called the garments of glory. Not a literal garment, but a symbolic garment. And so the high priest wearing a white uh, garment represents that he put back on the garment of glory when he entered into the temple to offer sacrifice. Uh, he wore a vestment very similar to vestments that I'm wearing. And as you can see on most priestly vestments, there's a lot of garden imagery right, on the vestment. Why is that? Because again, we today still as Catholics, we believe that when we enter the sanctuary, it's like we're entering back into God's presence, a new Garden of Eden. The high priest on his vestment, he wore an ephod that had 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel, representing the fact that when he would go and offer sacrifice to God, he was offering it 
on behalf of the whole nation and indeed of the whole world. The most important task of the high priest was to take the world and offer it back to God, as Adam was supposed to do in the very beginning. There's all of this cosmic imagery in the temple and of the priesthood and the imagery of the garden. I think it's significant for us to understand that. It brings a lot more meaning to the Mass, for example. We start to see that the Mass isn't just about the homily, even though homilies might be brilliant and funny and great. The importance of the Mass is about the offering of the sacrifice, offering of the whole world to God. And thanks be to God, as the letter to the Hebrews says, that Christ, being our high priest, he took our own nature upon himself. I had a friend in seminary who once said that God loved us so much that he became the size of an embryo, a womb. He wanted to truly participate in everything that it means to be human. So that as a high priest offering atonement on our behalf, he truly understands what we experience. He knows what we are about and therefore can have mercy and compassion on us. 